In this video, we'll be talking about seizures. So what are seizures? So synchronized and high frequency neuronal depolarization that leads to abnormal behavior is actually known as seizures. Seizures are definitely different from epilepsy, which can simply be described as a recurrent seizures which are unprovoked. And febrile seizures are not considered as epilepsy. So we have a general understanding that epilepsy and seizures, they are synonymous, but actually they are not. Every seizure is not epilepsy. But if there is a recurrent seizure and it has no known triggers, then one can imagine the diagnosis of epilepsy. So in this video, we'll be first talking about seizure classification, cause of the seizure, the neurobiological, cellular and molecular aspects of seizure. And lastly, we'll talk about the seizure in context of epilepsy to understand it better. So let's start with the classification. There could be focal seizures and there could be uh, specific generalized seizures. Focal seizure starts with a specific area of the brain, a specific lobe, let's say. And generalized seizure involves the entire brain. So generalized seizure is not that common compared to the focal seizure. So in context of epilepsy, 60% of the seizures that are seen are generally focal seizures. That means starting from a specific region in the brain. Whereas generalized seizures are more rare, but somehow uh, con uh, contributes 40% of the epilepsy cases. But right now, let's talk about a little bit more classifications about general and the uh, generalized and the uh, other type of seizures. So basically, in the generalized seizures, there are category known as tonic-clonic seizures. So in this case, there is a loss of consciousness. Tonic means muscle stiffness. And there is a clonic phase that means rhythmic jerking. So muscle stiffness and rhythmic jerking both are basically observed in this category. There is myoclonic seizures that means sudden brief muscle jerks are observed in this kind of seizure. And there is absence seizure that means brief period of uh, seizure and uh, after that it's not diagnosed. So this is basically this is kind of like uh, cryptic kind of seizures one might say and it is common in many children. So there is focal seizures, which basically affects a specific brain region as we have discussed. And there are subtypes like simple partial seizures. That means no loss of consciousness. It's just a brief moment of jerk. And basically there is complex partial seizures. That means altered consciousness and awareness and it's more severe. So there are different category of like classifying these seizures based on their severity, region of occurrence etc but let's talk about what caused the seizure so the cause of the seizure could be a traumatic brain injury imagine you have hit your head hard against a wall or a rod or you fell down from a bike so these are all examples of traumatic injury where your brain has undergone severe hit that might lead to let's say blood clot there could be epidural hematoma subarachnoid hematoma or even let's say subdural hematoma and these clots might eventually lead to seizure or uncontrolled brain activity. There could be also infections that might trigger a seizure. What are these infections? For example, there could be meningitis which can be caused due to bacteria, virus, fungus or even parasites. So if you want to know more about meningitis, or which is basically the inflammation of the meninges, uh, protection of the brain. So basically you can click on the video on the I button to know more about it. There could be also encephalitis, that means inflammation of the brain tissues. Or there could be abscess due to other kind of infection, bacterial infection, let's say there could be abscess. Uh, the brain abscess can also lead to seizure development. So there could be infection association of a seizure. So these infections, trigger the likelihood of uncontrolled synchronized brain activity. Other cause of seizures include autoimmune cause. Several autoimmune disorders are associated with seizure uh, susceptibility. For example, autoimmune encephalitis, limbic encephalitis, Hashimoto's uh, encephalopathy, and also systemic lupus erythematosus. 
let's say there is a brain tumor and due to this tumor there could be seizure development and this is pretty much seen in individuals with a brain tumor there are other reasons as well there could be metabolic imbalance for example a dysregulation of sodium potassium calcium in in the blood level all of this is really important for neuronal activity and this kind of situation can arise due to heart or kidney failure which might provoke a seizure there could be also another situation where the individual is exposed to harmful chemicals toxic chemicals heavy metal carbon monoxide or even let's say some sort of pesticides which which had toxic chemicals all these things can also trigger a, a seizure so environmental toxicants could be a good trigger for seizures and how they can trigger seizure is not very well understood but there is a strong association now sometimes a brain lesion can lead to seizure or sometimes it could be underlying epilepsy as well there could be ischemic complications for example <clears throat> in ischemic stroke we uh, pa patients are observed with seizure development so basically it's always associated now let's talk about the neurobiology of seizure in bit more details so inside our brain if we look at a micro level we would be seeing all the neurons are connected with each other forming neuronal circuit and circuits inside the cortex has specific firing pattern specific rhythmicity by which they fire and this rhythmicity is important for encoding information in seizure what happens is this rhythmicity is gone and there is too high activity anyway inside the brain there are sensors which can sense too high or too low activity both are sensed by activity sensors in the neuronal circuits which are specific molecules which has idea about how much calcium oscillations are happening inside the neuron once this sensing is done there would be downstream molecular network which would be utilized to bring back the activity to a balanced or baseline this is known as homeostatic synaptic scaling and this is a recent concept uh, basically to understand or to explain many of these neurological disorder so in neurological disorder disorders such as epilepsy or in case of seizures what happens is this homeostatic breakdown happens so that lead to uncontrolled and synchronized brain activity in any circuit there is an excitatory neuron that give rise to an excitatory drive to the circuit there are inhibitory neurons which are also important which gives inhibitory drive in the circuit it's like an on and off switch in the electrical circuit so if a circuit is always on it's detrimental if it is always off it is detrimental so one of the common theme is the excitatory inhibitory balance in the circuit is disrupted in many of these disorders in general excitatory inhibitory balance is maintained in a circuit but interplay between the excitatory and inhibitory regulation is disrupted in many brain disorders like many neurodevelopmental disorders like rett syndrome like autism like um fragile x like angelman in all of them there is a common problem the common problem is disruption of excitatory inhibitory balance in the neuronal circuit so often there is excitatory overdrive that might lead to a reduced inhibitory drive in the circuit which might also lead to epileptic seizures and these are associated underlying epilepsy so the key points we should remember that epilepsy which which also manifests as severe seizures might occur due to excitatory inhibitory imbalance so epilepsy is a chronic neurological disorder which has recurrent which is very important term recurrent unprovoked seizures every seizure is not epilepsy but epilepsy involves seizures and that are recurrent fashion anyway these seizures are caused by abnormal and excessive electric activity in the brain so epileptic seizures involve altered consciousness or abnormal movement altered sensation and behaviors and these events occur suddenly and there are uncontrolled electrical disturbances in the brain either in the entire brain or in the specific region so common symptoms of epilepsy involves contraction and jerking of the muscles loss of consciousness weakness confused speech startling anxiety etc so let's talk about the biological basis we already understood that excitatory inhibitory balance uh, imbalance is a key cause of epilepsy 
But in a neuronal circuit, there is not only neurons. There are several glial populations which in interact with each other. There are astrocytes, there are oligodendrocytes, etc. Astrocytes are very important in context of epilepsy because too much glutamate in an excitatory circuit is bad. It can lead to excitotoxicity. It can lead to death of these neurons. Astrocytes reuptake much of the glutamate present in the synaptic cleft and thereby preventing the excitotoxic effect of glutamate in the circuit. Now, all these seizures can be basically monitored by electroencephalogram or EEG. It's a good diagnosis of epilepsy or any kind of like uh, seizures. So any kind of seizures which doesn't occur all the time, it's very difficult to catch those events. But in epilepsy, one can really catch and study these events using electroencephalography. So this is how a normal individual's uh, electrical activity look like. Obviously, in an epileptic patient, one can see a burst of activity, very synchronized and uncontrolled. So let's talk about the etiology of the epilepsy. Often it is idiopathic. There is no clear cause. There are some genetic association of epilepsy that is now figured out. But most of the cases, epilepsy, which lead to seizures, are idiopathic. Sometimes they are secondary. That means like, due to a trigger, epilepsy or this kind of recurrent seizure is happening. Sometimes there are gene mutations which are associated with seizures and sometimes they are cryptogenic. So several uh, specific molecules such as potassium channels are heavily implicated in context of epilepsy. Potassium channels are very important in context of neuronal circuit because they regulate interspike interval. That means how often a neuron would spike or fire that is regulated or modulated by these calcium uh, potassium channels. Also, the waveform of the action potential, the mem passive membrane properties like input resistance, excitatory bad inhibitory balance in a circuit, all of these are regulated by the potassium channel activity. That's why potassium channel is super important. Several mutations in voltage-gated potassium channels are often found to be associated with epilepsy, like KCNQ family channels. So obviously, one can imagine if there is a problem in this channel, there is overactivation, hyperexcitability in the brain. So often there are several mutations in this KCNQ channel which are associated with epilepsy. So that is why potassium channel modulation is a key or a potential uh, target for modulating uh, epilepsy. Anyway, KV agonist and antagonist can be used. There are specific genes which encode for uh, voltage-gated sodium channels like SCN gene and these genes are also mutated in many contexts of epilepsy and syndromes like Dravet syndrome. So most of the anti-epileptic drugs or seizure medication try to manage the seizures by reducing the overall brain activity. There are specific drugs like valproic acid which inhibits uh, or in which increases the GABA levels there are also other kind, so that reduces the high excitability to desired excitability. There are many other uh, drugs such as uh, carbamepizine and uh, phenytonin or these are the drugs which blocks either voltage-gated sodium channel or work, work via various other mechanisms. Now, if you want to learn more about uh, epilepsy drugs, and how they work you can watch this video in the i button often these drugs are very difficult to pronounce and i always mess up their pronunciation anyway this particular video in the i button describe the epilepsy drugs and their uh, way of action in much more details so i hope this video was useful if you like this video give it a quick thumbs up don't forget to like share and subscribe see you in the next video